Sometimes coaches want to feel like God and I think that is why positional play is so popular. Of course, it is a really good way of playing. As a coach, you get to feel like you have all the answers. Here, I do not have the answers in every situation. The players find the solutions. That has been the biggest challenge for me and for them, but I can see how it's unlocked some nice things. Those are the words of a coach whose reputation continues to rise as does relationism in football. Henrik Rydström's Malmo draws inspiration from Fernando Dinis' Fluminense who clinched the league title last season with this style of play and interestingly this started from Twitter. Today we're breaking down relationism under Henrik Wistrom at Malmo and we're trying to implement that in Football Manager but first let's see why Henrik Wistrom's tactics are special. Relationism in football is based on a set of key tactical concepts that form the foundation of its philosophy. Here are some foundational tactics as shared by Stephen Cooper. Toko Yumavoy, which translates into touch and move. I hope I pronounced that correctly anyway. This concept focuses on the idea of constant motion where the players are encouraged to pass the ball and immediately move to a new position. It disrupts traditional defensive setups by creating dynamic, ever-changing patterns of play. The emphasis is on quick, sharp movements and passes, making it difficult for opponents to predict and counteract the next move. Tabela which is give and go. A fundamental principle where two players exchange quick, successive passes, a one-two, to penetrate tight-knit defensive lines. This tactic relies on precision and timing, with players exploiting momentary gaps created by their initial movement and pass. It underscores the importance of synergy and understanding between teammates as the success of a tabella is heavily dependent on seamless coordinated execution. Escadinha. This involves a series of layered movements and passes among multiple players, resembling steps or a staircase to progressively advance the ball up the field. Players will build through short, controlled passes, moving the ball in a zigzag or linear pattern that resembles climbing steps. The strategy focuses on collective effort and spatial awareness as players must effectively use available space and anticipate teammates' movements to create and exploit openings. And lastly, Gortaluz, cut the light. A deceptive maneuver where a player feints to receive or pass the ball, thereby misleading opponents about the intended play direction. This tactic is akin to a dummy move where the actual play bypasses the fainting player, leaving defenders confused and out of position. Cutting the light emphasizes the artistry and cunning with football, highlighting the importance of creativity and the ability to outwit opponents through clever, unexpected moves. So that's understanding the key concepts of relationism football. Now we're going to move over to Henrik Wistrom's Malmo's tactics. We are witnessing intriguing developments in Henrik Wistrom's Malmo tactics. There is a collective awareness of the opportunities presented by diagonal combinations, often referred to as ladder dynamics. And notably, up to six players at times demonstrate a synchronized harmony to these opportunities as the ball ascends up the figurative ladder. When watching Malmo, it is apparent that the team's possession structure lacks to find organization. The team's strategy revolves around advancing through the wide areas, but players do not intend intentionally occupy specific spaces within these areas. Instead, the player's positioning is predominantly around the ball carrier, allowing them to provide vertical passing options. This creates a fluid and dynamic playing style, resulting in the development of diverse tactical structures throughout the course of a match. The movement of players to create a vertical passing option yields several significant effects. First, it helps Malmo establish a numerical advantage in the wider areas, with their players outnumbering their opponents. Additionally, the movements and positioning of Malmo's players force the opposing team to adjust their defensive setup in order to cope with Malmo's overloads, creating opportunities for Malmo to advance. Not only do Malmo make use of diagonal movements, but they also capitalize on the positioning and movement of the third player, the third man run. Within this move, players demonstrate exceptional skills and awareness by executing back heels, one touch around the corner flicks and scoops. These maneuvers showcase the team's high level of spatial perception and quick decision making abilities when receiving the ball. 
While it is crucial for Malmo to create overloads through fluid positioning to support the ball carrier and gain possession advantages, these tactics alone do not guarantee ball progression. It's essential for players to maintain close proximity to one another to create opportunities for combinations. However, it is the individual actions of players that ultimately determine the success of these combinations in progressing the ball. Counter movements are effective in disrupting the opponent's defensive structure. Simply having more players does not guarantee an advantage, but by coordinating movements in different directions that complement each other, the opposition is compelled to make decisions about who to cover. Malmo are excellent at exploiting these situations to gain advantage. That was the Henrik Rydström tactical analysis, but now it's time. It's time. Let's dig into Football Manager, break down the tactic and have a look at the results that we got using it. Very quickly, just before we jump into the tactics, once again, I would like to say that I've been overwhelmed by the support shown on Patreon. If you feel that you want to support the channel from as little as £3, then go and check out the Patreon if you can afford to. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, but also you will get some bonus content like this tactic that we're watching now. This tactic video over on Patreon, we was playing some games and you can see me create, make changes and make tweaks to the system as well. Those on Patreon will, of course, to get the first look of the tactic. So do be like Dante and Jan Zomerhoff in joining the Patreon. I will see you there, but now let's jump back into Football Manager and break down this tactic. Because Malmo line up in a 4-2-3-1, we're gonna line up in a 4-2-3-1 on Football Manager, but a version of it, not exactly the 4-2-3-1 version that we know. I didn't mention the tilting in the um, opening analysis, mainly because I actually want to save that for the Dennis uh, video as well. So to create our version of tilting in Football Manager, we're gonna have this asymmetric 4-2-3-1. Relationism in Football Manager is very difficult to achieve, practically almost impossible, which is why in the community, I did ask you guys if I should mix the two, Robert the uh, Robert De Gerbi, Roberto De Gerbi <laughs> and Fernando Dennis's tactics together because that way we can have a positional play build up and then a relationism in attack. But Henrik Rydström does that already. So to have somewhat of a structured build up because we want to play out from the back and progress through the first or we even want to get the ball shifted out to that left hand side. But we need a sort of structured build up enabled to do that. But also if we do lose the ball, we're going to have some structure to ourselves to win the ball back. So the left back, he's going to be the inverted, uh, an inverted full back. And then in the middle, we're going to have two ball playing defenders further enhancing our build up. But the right back, he's going to try and exploit this whole flank down here on the right hand side. Originally, in order to try and create that tilt on the left hand side, I did have my defensive midfielder right here in the middle, kind of just forcing, forcing the play over to that left hand side. But what just kept happening anyway, when we're building out um, from the back, the defensive midfielder just kept to this position here. So I felt it was best just to keep the defensive midfielder in that RDM position slot, because also this formation here that you're seeing on your tactics screen is your defensive setup. That is very important. But to the left of him, we are going to be using a Segundo Volante. Now he's going to attack. And actually, there's a good explanation in the bonus content on Patreon why I was using Segundo Volante and what he actually does on this left-hand side. But he forces that slight tilt over on the left-hand side simply by just getting further forward and into this channel. Now, imagine when you are building out your attack, your back line isn't just going to stay deep like that. Of course, they're going to move forward as your team move forward. So the inverted fullback, though he's very defensive, he's still going to move sort of here. Now we've got this sort of trio of players on the left hand side but we are also using an advanced playmaker in the middle here who also likes to drift out into that wider area to be involved in play but also to receive because he is the playmaker he wants the ball and we also want to give him the ball. So a Segundo Volante on attack is what we use in defensive midfield of course I already touched on the number 10 being that advanced playmaker on attack. On the left hand side now to hold his width we're actually using an inverted winger on support for me personally it gave me better results but also the winger even though i did have cut inside he still had some sort of tendency to run outside of the player but again i just wanted uh, our player to cut inside and link up with the ball now you kind of got now moving on to the um last attacking midfielder we are using just the attacking midfielder but on support 
lastly, up top, again, in the bonus content, I touched on the various roles that we could have used. That, uh, deep line forward, advanced forward, target forward is what we actually use in the bonus content. Complete forward, which I didn't really rate in this tactic, surprisingly, and a pressing forward. A pressing forward, target forward, advanced forward, and deep line forward kind of gave me the best results. For me, though, it was just a tweaking game. I guess you could sort of throw off the opposition by just changing the striker's role. The idea of using a target forward was that he holds up the ball and that creates also that counter movement. So does a deep line forward by dropping deep and then having other runners running off him creates that counter movement. So I guess those other roles are more important. But the advance forward is something that I did settle on for you guys to download. So the team instructions, the attacking width is set to fairly narrow. So again, we're going to have that close proximity um, idea about us. We are going to play out from the back, short passing, but a higher tempo. Now, I wanted to get that quick combination play. The tempo for this team didn't necessarily affect the possession stats, which we're going to see in the results. In the final third, low crosses worked the ball into the box and also ran at the defence to be a little bit expressive. Now, Fernando Dinners, I guess you would actually use the B more expressive team instruction again i'm not exactly sure what it does so i don't exactly want to use it and say why i'm using it but giving you wrong information in transition when the possession has been lost we are counter pressing try and win that ball back immediately and when possession has been won we are going to counter which is going to kind of use this as should we say the blueprint the blue is that the right word we're just gonna use it we're just gonna use it it is sort of the meta on football manager but last video i did prove that counter using counter doesn't mean that your players are just gonna run just like headless chicken further forward it also depends on who's won the ball and that player's player role if it's an inverted uh, fullback for an example he's going to be a lot more cautious with the ball than an attack uh, a fullback on attack the fullback on attack may just run with the ball further forward trying to initiate that counter attack or the inverted fullback might look to play safe because there was no attacking pass on at that time goalkeeper in possession distribute the ball to the back line taking short kicks lastly out of possession we are using a high press a much higher defensive line trigger press much more often get stuck in and prevent the short goalkeeper distribution but that is not it because we also have set pieces i did a mini test with manchester city i believe it was i mean it lasted about five games after like smashing arsenal 4-1 i thought you know what that's enough i'm happy with that but we do have set pieces now the set pieces is called rdf relation and what i've done is actually made every sort of routine to be short because i want to keep the possession so even when we are doing corners you can see here it is short aim for the short person short person the short option free kicks similar aim for short free kicks deep as well aim for sure throw-ins especially in the attacking third we are looking to work the ball into the box so these routines will come with the tactic download as well was it actually effective though these set piece routines we're now moving over to the results after actually i do the player instructions because a few of you have reminded me i've been skipping the player instructions not intentionally so the inverted winger hold up the ball tackle harder advanced playmaker tackle harder advanced um, attacking midfielder has no instructions neither does the advanced forward Segunda volante dribble more tackle harder the dm take more risk the inverted uh, fullback tackle harder and the fullback on attack will be crossing from the byline dribbling more and tackling harder but that there's the tactic now let's go and have a look at those results before closing the video we did of course win the swedish premier division playing 30 winning 25 drawing three and losing two the opening games that we actually played on patreon was the first three games against Halmstead, verbergs and i can't pronounce that team's name they are but looking at the stats we scored the most goals had the most shots for the fewest shots against most possessions so i told you about the um the tempo stuff and also the counter attacking so we've got 64 percent of the ball and our pass completion is 90 percent just one behind hammerby who have the best passing percentage we scored 14 goals from corners so our uh, routine was clearly effective we had the most dribbles for as well joint most clean sheets and the fewest 
conceded. I didn't complete the Swedish Cup because of some weird, it's a weird schedule in Sweden. The season's finished, but the cup clearly hasn't. I mean, we've only played one round of the Swedish Cup. But unfortunately, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. It's a bit different, our attacking midfielder, left winger actually, with the most goals and 21 assists. Absolute crazy. Basically, a one man team. But that concludes today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, then make sure you are checking out that Patreon link in the description, but also in the comments as a pinned comment. It is pinned. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. God bless. Peace out.